Hi guys, Andre Unger here. So, you know, I, I'm an, an algo trader and uh, you know what I think about uh, <clears throat> algo trading, systematic trading, automated trading, call it as you prefer and you know my opinion if you follow me, but uh, I want to let you know also opinion of uh, other traders and I invite you now to listen to what uh, a very skilled trader means and thinks about automated trading, about algo trading. Listen carefully because it's really interesting. Well, uh, my name is Sebastian Baumgartel. I'm an orthodontist by trade, so I'm a, I'm a dentist that specializes in, in doing braces. And uh, uh, so that's my day job. And then my part-time, uh, I guess, gig is, uh, is trading. And um, I've been trading roughly since, since 2008. And I mean futures trading. I've, I've been investing in stocks and things like that a lot longer. But uh, futures trading roughly since 2000, uh, 2008, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I am a discretionary trader. Uh, I was sort of raised by Larry Williams, and as you probably know, he's a discretionary trader mostly. And so I, I, I do have that bias. Um, but, you know, you never really know what you don't know. And so uh, when a good friend of mine suggested uh, I, should, I should attend the, the trading masterclass um, with uh, Andrea and... Uh, and, and Michael Cook and Kevin Davey and Tim Ray, uh, I, I figured, uh, you know, why not? Let's give it a try and, and see, uh, see what I learn about systems development because I'm certainly open. At the end of the day, I don't care how I make my money. Um, and uh, I, I, did, I, did learn, I did learn quite a bit, um, you know, aside from meeting some really interesting people and... Um, and having a great steak dinner at Wolfgang's, which, by the way, is one of my favorite restaurants, so uh, that alone was a reason to go to the meeting. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I learned a lot. You know, you, you learn about system development. Uh, you learn, or I, I learned uh, uh, how to make systems more robust. Um, I also learned how to assess if a system is still working and in a drawdown or if a system might have stopped working, which that's my biggest problem with the idea of systematic trading that, you know, you, uh, the system might stop, stop working and you continue to, to trade it because you're not aware of that. And so that gave me a little bit more, more confidence. Um, also really loved um, to learn a little bit. I have a little bit of a statistics background and I, I, I love to learn a little bit about uh, Kevin Davies' Monte Carlo analysis and, and, uh, and how he applies that to, to his trading system. So, um, you know, it was really, really educational. Uh, I'm still a discretionary trader at the end of the day. Uh, most of the things I learned there, uh, I apply uh, to test out discretionary trading ideas. So I ju don't just go into my trading with a gut feeling of, of what to do. There's some testing that goes on behind the scenes to, to make sure if there's valid that there's validity to to some of the approaches, but I also I also have a couple of systems that uh, that I've been trading since then. I developed those earlier, didn't have the confidence to 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 uh, put them live, and I I did tweak them a little bit after the weekend in New York, um, and then I've I've been trading them since uh, since 2017 in the summer, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's been that's been really good for me. Uh, they, they, been profitable since uh, with minor drawdowns only so uh, I did I did learn a little bit so I am I am 95% discretionary but 5% uh, uh, systematic <laughs> I trade pretty much anything that moves so you know there's got to be enough uh, enough volume so you, you get decent fills and uh, I do not trade ICE futures simply because a couple of years ago, the the IC introduced some uh, some new data fees, and I'm just a little stubborn like that. I don't I don't think I need to trade 
cocoa and sugar and things like that, uh, even though I used to like to trade those, but there's enough other things to trade. So um, I'll, tr I tr I'll trade anything that has enough, uh, enough volume. Yeah, so for my personal trading, I'm a really simple guy. I just manually enter my uh, my orders with uh, Charles Schwab. That's my that's my broker for my private trading, and um, and for the World Cup, uh, where Robbins is obviously the introducing broker, I go through uh, ADM Investor Services and uh, CQG on the back end, and I have uh, I use uh, Genesis uh, Trade Navigator as a platform, which has served me really well over the years. So. Um, and, and you might wonder why I do something different for the World Cup and why I do something different for my private uh, uh, account. And that's just me being a creature of habit. Um, I'd opened up an account with Schwab years ago and <clears throat> and uh, I just I just like the idea of generating signals in my trade navigator and then entering them manually uh, in, uh, in the Schwab platform. That gives me a little bit more time to reflect on what I'm doing and if I really want to place that trade. Uh, trading through the platform for the World Cup is super simple. You know, you can be very visual. You just click on the chart and the and placing that trade is so simple that I found that sometimes it's too simple and, and I don't have that, that extra pause that might keep me from trading. And uh, when I over trade, things usually don't work out so well. So in the World Cup, I have to do it that way in my private account for now. That's what I do. Well, this was, I think, my third or, or fourth time participating, and I had a, I had a spot on the leaderboard, and almost every time I participated, but then I just lost that because I made bad decisions. And in 2019, so last year, I made fifth place, um, which I'm quite happy about. Obviously, I played a win. Uh, first place would have been nicer, but I'm happy with fifth place. And uh, I, I made 97.1% uh, return over, over that 12-month period from January 1st to December uh, 31st. And uh, <clears throat> the, the really interesting thing is that I had a terrible first quarter that year and uh, started out with, with a pretty big drawdown. And then I just stopped because I almost had given up, but I still had money in my account. And so then later in the year, I started trading the World Cup again. And uh, so I basically created all that um, all that return in the last six months, which uh, which was pretty good. Uh, definitely, definitely better than I had anticipated. Yeah, it's it's what a lot of other people say too. It's I think it's discipline. Uh, I can trade, and many of your listeners can trade. And if they learn from you guys, they certainly can trade. Um, I can trade. The problem is, uh, I have a lot of good trades and I have a lot of bad trades. And I technically know what approach works. And the other things, I, I try out. I do this. I do that. And I wasn't very disciplined. Especially the better I was doing, uh, the more I lost discipline. And so, you know, I just looked at myself in the mirror and I said, "Hey, listen, stop messing around." And just just trade what you know. Just trade what you're good at. And once I started sticking to that, it just uh, it just was working out great. You know, it just kept taking off. So uh, so discipline. Um, that's I think that's the top uh, the top secret here. Yeah. So in the World Cup, uh, I I trade that purely uh, discretionary. And uh, I start out with the minimal funding amount, which is $10,000. Um, <clears> I might do that differently next year, uh, simply because I noticed that a lot of good trades I can't take. So the bigger contracts, like like crude oil or, or the E-minis right now, uh, I can't trade currently in the World Cup because they have such high margin requirements. Um, or I would just uh, have too much risk on if I traded those contracts. So right now with the elevated margin requirements and the volatility that's in the market, I'm a little limited as to what I can trade because uh, this year too, I just started out with $10,000 and I'm happy. I'm, I'm up roughly 50%, but <clears throat> um, 
my private account where I can trade everything because I have more money and it uh, is, is actually doing a little better. So uh, um, the uh, next year I might I might use a little bit more. But I I I started 2019 with ten thousand dollars. I think my drawdown was was down to I was down to six thousand dollars or whatever at, at some point, and then I came back and finished with a little over nineteen thousand dollars at the end of the year. And um, yeah, so what strategies and how many strategies? Um, like I said, I only have two systems, which I learned in New York at the trading masterclass. Uh, if you trade systematically, you want to typically trade more systems. Um, but I only have two systems, and and the rest is discretionary. And in the World Cup, it's all discretionary. And there, uh, I don't just have one one approach, really. I mean, I have a number of different indicators, and to me, it's kind of like like painting a picture. You know, if you're a painter, you have different brushes, and you pick the one that that you need at that moment. And so I, I'll I'll look at my indicators, and they give me a rough idea of what's going on. And and by now, I've, I have enough experience to know how to weigh the information I get because sometimes sometimes these indicators can be conflicting right and so uh, I, I will I will then heed uh, the information from some indicators more than uh, than I might from others or I might throw out some indicators completely and uh, and at the end I get a picture if that market is worth betting some money on um, and um, and that's kind of how I how I trade so really it's a single approach, but uh, it's it's a multi-pronged approach with with a lot of different indicators. Um, one of the uh, in terms in terms of the indicators, one of the things I've gotten a little better at at using um, is is the the MACD, and uh, so I started using that over the course of last year. And uh, uh, and at the same time, <clears throat> uh, I, I started using uh, uh, moving averages a little bit uh, stronger to just help me uh, help me find trends. Uh, that's not an approach that I've been typically trading, um, but uh, uh, yeah. So it's it's been mainly moving averages and MACD that I started incorporating into my trading, and uh, uh, and then currently I'm I'm working on the Fibonacci. Uh, 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 numbers a little bit to see how how I might be able to to benefit from that. Um, it's it's something that that to me is a little bit like black magic, but I've started seeing some value uh, in it, and uh, uh, so I'm not trading Fibonacci's yet, but uh, I'm I'm working on building them into my trading, and I think there's uh, there's some additional value that that I could gain from those. Yeah, so. In general, with trading, in my mind, the psychological aspect is is key. You know, I'm a pretty smart guy, and yet for so many years, you know, I learned to trade from the world's best trader, Larry Williams, right? And uh, for so many years, I, I I couldn't make any money. I didn't lose a whole lot of money, but I also didn't make a lot of money, and it was absolutely not worth. It was fun, but it was not worth it financially. And and I, I certainly had the intellectual capacity to trade. So the question is. You know why wasn't I making any money? And it's all it's all it's all psychological, right? So the 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 aspect of discipline is is purely uh, psychological. But I've also noticed that trading just tends to bring out the worst in people. Uh, all the bad all the bad characteristics that you may have, trading brings out. If you're greedy, it'll come out when you trade. If you're impatient, it'll come out when you trade. If you're a wild gun, it'll come out when you trade. And uh, so I happen to have all these characteristics and more. And so over the years, I had to learn to curb these. And then once I've been working on that, things started getting a little better. And then enter the World Cup, and it's completely different again because your, high, your leverage is so much higher and you don't have a lot of capital to work with. And, and one larger mistake can wipe you out. And so the pressure is on. But that is... One of the reasons I'd actually started trading the World Cup, not because I wanted to become world champion, but because a friend of mine had been trading the World Cup for a few years, and, and he got on the leaderboard a couple of times, and uh, and he told me it's a really valuable experience because it it, it helps you learn about yourself. Uh, it obviously teaches you more about margin requirements and all those things, but you know it puts a mag magnifying glass on on you, and so. Uh, the World Cup has been a real growing experience, and, and 
so over the years, uh, I've gotten better, I think, because I, because I competed. And, um, and so, yeah, the World Cup just magnifies all these <clears throat> uh, psychological problems that, that you, may, um, you may have. And uh, yeah, I, one, more, one more thing that I think a lot of traders have is that they're perfectionists, right? I certainly am. And that's the other, that's the other thing. Uh, I, started, I started to learn that I had to let go a little bit, okay? Because if you expect perfection from this game of trading, because you have it all figured out, you have it back tested, and this is going to work, the market will teach you that... <laughs> It will work, but not as good as you think it will. And, uh, and and if you think you're a good trader, the market will teach you you're not as good as you you think you are. So if you're a perfectionist, get rid of that. And and the World Cup, especially when you're seeing how all these other traders are producing unbelievable gains. If you saw this year, I mean, with what was going on in the markets, there were some guys that that were killing it in the World Cup and still are. You know, thousands of percent uh, performance so far. Uh, that that puts a little pressure on you too because you try to keep up and you 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 try to compete and then you might be tempted into taking trades or over leveraging your trades and so you just got to stay cool and do your thing and uh, not worry what's going on around you in the world cup and in general and and then you will succeed Mm, i think i touched on that a little bit already it's mainly the amount of money i have in there uh, I'm a little limited in the World Cup. In my private account, I have more money in it, so I'm not limited. I can trade whatever I want. And then the other aspect is that in my private account, I only compete against myself, and uh, uh, so I, I, there's no pressure. In the World Cup, uh, I, I want to trade. I want to win. So obviously, I might uh, I might uh, have a little bit more risk on than I would in my private account. Not might. Most definitely, I have more risk on in, in the World Cup account than in my private account. Okay. But those are the major differences. Otherwise, I, I trade pretty much the same in both accounts. Um, no, I wish I would have just been more honest with myself earlier on. And this year, I'm having a great World Cup year, even though I'm not on the leaderboard, because you know I made that, I had that epiphany last year where I just, I just realized that. I, I burn up a lot of my good trades with bad trades and uh, and I can kind of tell in the beginning which trades are good and which are not going to be good and um, I just get rid of losers quicker or don't even attempt to trade trades that, that I'm not too sure about so I wish I would have just uh, done that a little uh, sooner but uh, you know at the end of the day every day is a learning experience and uh, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to, to be doing this. Well, the uh, listen, I never thought I could do it, honestly. I, I didn't think I was, you know, to me, people like Larry Williams trade the World Cup uh, or, or Andrea or Michael Cook, you know, not not me. Uh, and uh, then my, my good friend Mike, uh, who I met through trading actually at one of Larry's courses, he uh, he joined one year and made it on the leaderboard. and. And he encouraged me, he, just like he encouraged me to come to New York. And he said, Sebastian, I think you would learn a lot from that. And uh, when Mike said something, I, I typically listen because he's a very smart guy. And so I, I thought, okay, what the hell? Let me uh, let me try the World Cup. And uh, I got on the leaderboard uh, within about three months. And uh, I was first place for a couple of weeks, actually, uh, which I didn't know what to make out of that uh, in my first go around. And then I, I stumbled and made mistakes and, and, and obviously burnt up. And uh, uh, but I was I was kind of hooked because you know Mike was right. Uh, it it does teach you a lot about yourself. And uh, I've 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 played along in the World Cup ever since. I think this is my fourth year, maybe my fifth year. I lose track. Um, and I just do it because because I, I I learn about myself. I learn about trading. And uh, yeah, and last year I made fifth place, so that was that was nice too. Well. You know, the, the, the biggest advice I have is be patient with yourself and and try to preserve your capital. I don't mean paper trading. I, I find that paper trading is great, but that really doesn't help me much at all. It's very different when you put your own money on the line. 
And that's again psychological, right? But uh, I, I mean, just be careful with your capital so you can survive. It helps to have a day job that creates some income for you so it can keep you alive while you figure this out. But be patient. And I'm not, I'm not a genius. I'm not Andrea, who's a member of Mensa. You know, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just a regular guy with a decent head on his shoulders. And um, that I want to trade, and it takes, it takes commitment. Uh, but if you give yourself enough time and you choose a good mentor, then uh, uh, you know eventually you should you should get there. Because if I was able to do it, then then so can almost anybody else. Yeah, you know, I I I don't think so. I think that was very comprehensive. <laughs> except for, uh, you know, I'm I'm really. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, uh, I got this opportunity. Again, it's a huge honor that when when you guys contacted me uh, to do this, and um, you know, I hope I hope you're well uh, down down in Italy. This was this is a terrible time we, we all went through. Uh, I couldn't work for eight weeks, and uh, I thought, great, I'm a trader. That's fantastic. And you know what? These eight weeks of not working as an orthodontist were also my worst weeks trading because. I don't know. It messed with my head, whatever it did. So again, psychology. I'm glad to be back at work. I'm glad that life is a little bit more normal now. And my trading's back to normal too. I worked my way out of my drawdown. And uh, so being a part-time trader is not the worst in the world, I think. Uh, you don't need to look for becoming a professional right away. Just take some time and uh, and get, get good at this slowly but steadily. And uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Andrea, and, and thanks for the uh, great interview. Very comprehensive. So, guys, uh, you see, uh, it's uh, it, it's an interesting world, a fascinating world, and uh, everything related to systematic trading. Call it as you prefer. There are numbers on the base of a decision. This is algo automated systematic trading. But if you are curious, if you are more curious, and if you are uh, thrilled by, by this, you can register to the link here below, it's free, and you will get more information about this algo world. See you there!